So where are we going today, Mr. Boo? Today, we're going from beautiful Bordighera to... San Remo in Italy. <laughs> You're only supposed to blow the bloody doors off. So, this week we are continuing our Italian Riviera adventure by making the journey from uh, Bordighera on to San Remo, where we are going to spend the night, aren't we? <laughs> spend the night in, in, what's it called? The Grand Hotel des Anglais. The Grand Hotel of the English, eh? That suits us, don't you think? Um, but um, it's now come very sunny, it's very lovely, so, um, well, sit back and enjoy the drive as we take you further along the Italian Riviera to the wonderful city or town of San Remo. Bobby there, look. Bobby. Bobby. Many years ago, I used to go to a, a, a gay bar in Notting Hill Gay. And essentially, it was a room above, a, a, like a cupboard above Ryman's, the, the, you know, the stationers in Notting Hill. It was up some steep steps, very tiny, very secretive, and uh, full of shame. And uh, <laughs> whenever there was a fight, um, the, the barman, well, the guy who ran it, would always shout out to the man who did the disco, Bobby, Barcelona. And he would put Freddie Mercury on singing Barcelona at top belt as a couple of drag queens would lay into each other with some, you know, pool cues and chair legs, that kind of thing. It was all very Al Capone. But uh, yeah, that's how he dealt with fighting. It was put Barcelona on loud. They used to do a buffet, you know, on a Sunday afternoon, because it was the only way you could get around the licensing laws. I'm in the bus lane, I don't think I should be in this, should I? No. Telling me stories. Um, but uh, yeah, they used to put on a buffet so so you could carry on drinking all Sunday afternoon. It had the worst volivants in the Western world, but nobody cared because they weren't there for the volivants. Can I possibly get out of that lane? Yes, I think I better. Just as it ended as well. <laughs> At least we got the volivant story. We got the volivants out. Some version of our sausage rolls. So we're going to try and go to our hotel because um, we're hoping we've secured a parking space. We're hoping even more. There's some electrical charging because we're down to 27 of range so we definitely need a charge um, we're going to show you around this hotel because we're thinking it might be quite interesting it's quite old and uh, and then we're going to take you out in San Remo for dinner aren't we? We are. We're going out for dinner there are some very grand buildings in San Remo aren't there? There oh. are a lot of history. Look at these wonderful buildings. I'm glad this has been, I imagine it's been redone as apartments, but at least they've kept the, the facade, which is fabulous. Presumably they're going to restore it because it's quite faded, isn't it? And then next door to it, another. The Hotel Londra. Londra. So there must have been as well quite a big British influence if we had a London hotel and the Hotel Anglais. Yeah. Kind of just been Russian. It's coming up here on our left. Oh. 
Oh yes, yeah, there. I don't know how to get in. I don't know if it's there. Is that it up there, the Grand Hotel? Yeah. Fabulous. But did, do you think we should have gone up there? Yeah. Oh. That's why it said, and that's why I said. Yeah. I wasn't sure. We'll have to turn around. We turn. This is the Royal. So this is where the Adeo stay. Yeah, that's what I thought. But there is just this cluster of incredible hotels down here. As I say, some of them may be uh, past their sell-by date, but there's nothing wrong with that. Sometimes they're quite fun, those hotels. As long as they've ruined it with sorts of holiday in fixtures. It's quite nice to go to an old hotel and see the sort of old furniture and the old pictures and the old bath taps. In the Royal, in the old part of the hotel, in the bathrooms, they have fridges for your makeup and your creams. Really? Yeah. Wow. Let's go left here. You think we can go around that way? Yeah. Thank you. Following the map. Yeah. The Villa Nobel, do you think that's to do with the... Oh, look at this little, uh, like, Piaggio ape, or what is that one? Is that an ape? That's an ape. 8.50. 8.50. It's funny you mentioned the villain Nobel. <laughs> yes, indeed. Alfred Nobel did live here. In did fact, he? He died here. Wow, that's explosive news. <laughs> uh -huh. It's funny, isn't it? The man who invented dynamite gave his name to the Peace Prize. Curious contradiction. Now, which way? Down here? Down here. Wow, look at the casino up there. Isn't that fabulous? Dating back to 1905, you know. I say, San Remo has just got the most magnificent collection of, to some extent, faded glamour, but still glamour. It's a little bit like when we went to Genoa and we sort of, I ended up characterising Genoa as being sort of like a, a, a grand old maiden aunt who was a little bit down on her look. And that's what we thought, really, didn't we? We thought it was sort of... But in a good way. I mean, we like the fact that she was down on her luck. Straight on. Straight on. It's a tricky one. Wow, it's a bright one as well. Where that sign is there. Yeah. That's the one hotel, Des Anglais Grand Hotel. Grand Hotel. I'm even more impressed. Right. Wow, look at that. That, folks, is, is where we're staying. Are you sure? I haven't brought a dinner jacket, Mr. Boo. Oh, no. Only got me stripy top and me, me only monster coat. <laughs> well, I'm sure they'll... I'm sure they'll let you in when they see that you're with me. I love it. I love it. Oh, I'm going to be poking around this hotel all night. I once stayed in a hotel on the Isle of Man when I was a kid. Mm -hmm. And there were about ten people in it, and it had been a hotel that Princess Margaret stayed in. It was a Grand Island Hotel, and it's knocked down now. And in every room, there were just these obsolete Kirby vacuum cleaners, which were supremely expensive at the time and weighed about 300 weight. You could have gone to war with them. And, uh, but they were just left in these rooms, mm. like a sort of, it was like Jurassic Hoover. Jurassic Hoover. <laughs> except, uh, except I would say Dyson. But they were the Dysons of their day. They were just, just a bit heavier. Um, but boy, could they suck. But it's, it's had a crazy golf course at the front. I mean, it's all coming back to me now. Not, not crazy golf, a putting green. And uh, it was overgrown. The grass was sort of up to your knees. And yet in the, in the bar, there were pictures of Princess Margaret sipping cocktails there in the day. In the day. Okay. In the day. Look at that, what's that? It's not a charger, is it? It's the electric, electric going into there, yes. Hey, we're coming back here if we're stuck. I'm going to unplug that light. Um, <laughs> flashbacks to <laughs> somewhere. That goes your bed. Look. Oh, charging. Thank you. Destination charging. Porsche, though. We're not Porsche. We're Porsche enough. Do you think it'll work for us? Well, there's another one there for Teslas. Oh, yeah. I'm just parking here. And just Electric vehicles. See what they say. I think you might need to be a Porsche. That's very funny. <clears throat> you might be surprised when we tell you what we've paid for a night here. Well, actually, let's wait till we get inside because it may be fur coat and no knickers, as Mike Harding used to say. We might get in and they say, oh, no, sorry, you're in the annex. Yes, oh, you'll need an annex. 
Um, well, let's put the put the thing on and see if you can do anything with that Porsche chart. I don't even know what you do with it. Do you, don't you have to be a Porsche? Don't know. Well, we'll soon find out. Well, there's a Shuko. Yeah. So if worst came to the worst, we can plug into the Shuko. We should probably check in first before we start using stuff. No, I want to put it on. Have you got our Shuko? Yeah. I had a feeling he was going to ignore me, Twigs. Hmm? <laughs> Is that right? Yeah. So, we're going to attempt to uh, plug our sh Shuko into the Porsche. <clears throat> I think this could end in tears. Um, that's that. And then, oh, it needs to be the other side, doesn't it? Well, I'm very excited to use a Porsche charger. I bet the electric's superior, don't you, Mr. Boo? I bet you it's, it's of a better class. Are we charging? No. Do you think there's a button? Probably. I think we'll probably have to tell reception. Do you think you need a card? Might need a Porsche. <laughs> well, we'll leave it on and we'll go ask at reception, shall mm. we? There's a lot of wires hanging out. I mean, it may be it's charging and we don't, don't show. We get that sometimes, don't we? I think uh, there must be something on that posh screen. Which screen? Well, isn't that thing a screen? Oh, no. I don't think so. I don't know. Let's go and inquire. Let's go and inquire. Let's go, Twiggy. Oh, I'm loving the original doors of the lobby. Right up my Ujaka Pivi. Hate it when they rip these doors out and put something electric in, or horrible. Inglese. Okay, you booked the double room, so you pass for the passport. Okay. Passport. So we just checked in, but we're trying to explain to them that the Citroen Ami costs one euro fifty to charge maximum, because they're trying to charge us thirty euros. <laughs> um, but you know what I'm going to do, Mr. Boo? I'm going to put it on our portable power bank, and then I'm going to bring the power bank up and recharge it in the room, and then keep taking it down. And that way, I'll save 30 euros. But apart from that, the hotel, certainly the lobby, is fabulous. Moment of truth. There you go, I'll let you go in. Well, it's definitely not belly pock, but um, first impressions, it's all right. It's all right. It's a room. It's got high ceilings, which is very unusual for a modern hotel, of course. Um, but in those days, they had high ceilings. And I'm guessing there's a bit of a view out of this balcony. But let's uh, fling open the curtains, Mr. Boo. Have a look at our car that we can't afford to charge down below. I'm guessing we've got a view out the front. Have we? Wow. Look at that. There is a sea view, and as I said, I think Elton's down there. Look, can't afford to be charged, but he's parked up. He's parked up. But yeah, what a view! How fantastic! A bit of uh, belly pock glamour. Mm. So, a bit of room detail for you. Well, tea and coffee making facilities. Some people on these videos say complimentary. I say tea and coffee making facilities and we brought our own bags. Telly, telly if you want a telly. Who wants a telly these days? Nobody. you will watch your pad. Oh, oh, drinks, they'll be 30 euros. Because we did come here thinking we were going to try and have a steam in the spa, didn't we? Mm. Which we presumed was complimentary, but that's 30 euros too. <laughs> Very nice wardrobes. Um, if you like, if you like wardrobes, safe to put your... Uh, 
well, you're 30 euros in, you can keep it safe. Um, and then the bathroom in here. Oh, very nice. It may be a bit of, bit of marble, bit of oh, marble effect, but nice hairdryer, very big sink. A B-Day, Mr. Booter, you can keep your champagne cold. A nice toilet with sanitary safety. It's got a strap round. A uh, reasonable sh size shower. A bed test, Mr. Boo. <gasps> oh, it's very, very nice. Is it firm? Yeah, but not too firm. Not too firm. Twiggy, have you have you checked it? Twiggy's checking the doormat. I fear the worst. There might be a pee coming on. No, Twigs. Not that way. Got her little house over here and her bowls and her biscuits. She didn't fancy him after all. She wants something from the mini bar instead. If I was one of those anal hotel reviewers, I'd probably say that maybe you shouldn't have somebody else's breakfast order still here. I think maybe we should have had a new one for room 209, but uh, I'm not that kind of person. But I think the best bit is, is the view and the real sort of old school glamour of the view as you look out across the Med and across some of the other grand villas and hotels and um, a setting sun over there. But um, no, it's a nice room um, and we'll see what they deliver for breakfast because that is included, that's not 30 euros. Breakfast is, is included. So I've decided what we're going to do is uh, go down and put the car on our um, portable power bank which should add about 12 kilometres of range and then in an hour's time I'll bring it up here in the lift and charge you up for now and get another 12. Now you can't tell I'm from Yorkshire can you? <laughs> Not off. Not sure the lift shaft is original. I think that was replaced in the 70s sadly. We can safely say those door handles are original. Just gorgeous details like that I love. So I'm just going to move the uh, Citroen and me out of the Porsche parking space and put it next door into the non-Porsche parking space and then I'm going to plug it into our power bank and save 30 euros. So, trusty power bank, trusty cable, pulled out of its slot, it's got a bit jammed as usual. And uh, Bob's your uncle, Fanny's your aunt, two hours 14 to a full charge, this will take an hour, that will give us another 12, we'll then take that up to the room, surreptitiously under Mr Boo's big fur coat, charge it up for now, bring it back down, Bob's your uncle. Plug this in here. Charging up, 30 euros saved, get in. Right, we're off into uh, San Remo to, um, to get some snap. But before we do, I just want to show you this wonderful old bar. Let's look at this lobby. It's a shame the rest of the hotel hasn't been preserved in this way because this is just fantastic. And it's the real deal. But you know, over here you've got this hideous plastic furniture which really has got nothing to do with it, but equally the lobby is lovely over here. We need more wood, they need to go out and buy some second-hand old sticks of furniture from Troc and put it in. You know, we're going to the old town, Mr Boo. We're heading up towards the market and the old town. Oh, old town and the market. You excited, Twiggy? Yes. Oh, I think Mr Boo's fancying a new car. Fiat, are there any Topolinos in? Quite interesting as you walk round uh, San Remo because you know I think I last came here it was a long time ago seven or eight years ago and it sort of felt to be on the down but I have to say it feels like there's a lot of work going on on those old hotels and this hotel up here has been developed now they're either been turned into apartments or they've been refurbished as hotels but either way there's definitely a sense of uh, 
life returning to San Remo. It doesn't feel like a place that's in terminal decline. And I kind of thought it was. And the old casino still got a bit of something about it. Not least it's Christmas decorations. Or maybe they're year round, I've no idea. I think it's always quite flash. I love that clock machine sign. I know, look at it. So we're into the, the I guess the new town, the pedestrianised bit. They're nice clothes shops. They're like a they're like a bit of a tie of the Italians, don't they? But uh, it's very glam really. Now we always like to keep you up to date on this channel. Well I thought this was a shop selling hemp. Um, well it's got some drinks machines, very Italian. Uh, and it's got another a mirror over here, coffee machine maybe. But here you go, amazingly, you can, you can buy hemp. Cannabis, cannabis, Mr. Bill. When I was a child, I'd have been locked up for even talking about it in Dewsbury. Uh, and you can also buy, um, well, <coughs> Durex and uh, m and M's. I mean, everything you need for an ideal Italian night out. Sarimo. And they put the lights on for us. <laughs> clue where Mr. Boo's taking me. We now seem to be in the middle of a building site. Is it the Hotel Soul? <laughs> kind of hoping not, I think. Mr. Boo's got a bit lost, I think. The old town's up there. That one where we went before is the other side. Yeah. Under that arch, there's a yellow light and I think it's just through there. Are you sure it's not a red light? No, it's not one of your restaurants. Looks like my kind of restaurant. Sexy shop. Whoa. Is there anything less sexy than a sexy shop? We're going into the depths of the old town now, opposite the market. Now, a number of years ago, uh, uh, quite a number of years ago, we came here. I think we cycled, didn't we? And uh, we found this restaurant for lunch up here. And uh, it, it was all fine. Well, there was only us in and one other couple. And, and the other couple, well, there's no nice way of saying it, is that they, um, they sort of had sex in front of us, didn't they? Yes, they must have been at the sexy shop. I think the sexy shop had got them going, and uh, they sort of, you know, they did everything bar um, press-ups. Um, but it, it, was, it was a memorable lunch, wasn't it? Indeed. Um, but we're not going back there, are we? We're not going there today. No, no. So, it's this place, Mr. Boo. It's this place. Wowza, this is, uh, well, in for a penny, in for a pound, it's the Osteria Camelot. Oh, it's Richard Burton. Do you remember him in Camelot, Richard Harris? Oh, they all did it. What is the king doing tonight? Oh, this, this will either be a triumph or a disaster. Let's see. There's nobody here. Oh, and there's a cat. It's going really well. Inside there. Oh, nice sun-dried tomatoes to start. Look at that. That's a bag of bread. A bag of bread and some sun-dried. We're starving. Mr. Boo is having an Apero spritz. That's very posh. I don't even know what it is. It's not for you. Oh, it's not for northerners like me. I'm sticking to my vat of red wine for 10 euros for a litre. It's like mum's in the kitchen. What's this, Mr. Boo? This is the house speciality of uh, anchovies. Yeah. Uh, in a tomato uh, soupy sauce with some little bruschettas. Yeah, croutons. Have a taste. It looks remarkable. I've never, I don't think I've ever had this. Certainly not with this music, I've never had it. Mmm. What's it like? Fresh, fresh anchovies. Light tomato sauce, very here, very Ligurian. Parsley, 
Uh, parsley. A lot of parsley, parsley going tomato. on today, I've noticed. Uh, a little bit of onion, no garlic. Really simple. Really clean tasting. Classic Italian. Hmm. It's delicious. The thing that always intrigues me is when we come to somewhere over the border in Italy, and it's a good local place like this, is just how light Italian food is. And yet the Italian food I was brought up with as a kid, you know, was heavy ragu sauces and massive piles of pasta, and you sort of imagined everything was, was big and heavy, but it's not. This is light and delicate. Lunch was light and delicate. In fact, sometimes you're sort of craving a bit of French heaviness. But my experience is it tends towards this version. And this is the sort of, I think, I think the dreaded word, the more authentic Italian food. Discuss. Are you waiting for your birthday rabbit? Twiggle's birthday tonight. It's Twiggle's birthday this week, yes. Twiggy's birthday, she two. She's two years old. Oh, Twigs, you're over in your special coat. So I've got my rabbit. What I was gonna have for lunch, I've got the Guerian rabbit, which is rabbit olives. There's some rabbit livers. This is the first meat I've had today. We've been entirely a pescatarian. Is that the real phrase? Well, we've eaten a lot of fish, put it that way. Um, rabbit, rabbit livers, and uh, the owner of the restaurant just said to us that, don't worry, it's not the cat that we saw coming in. It looks nice, let me taste a bit. I'm guessing there might be some potatoes and things coming, but I'll just taste a bit of rabbit. But maybe not, maybe it's just this. Mm. It's lovely. There's something about the rabbits in Italy that they just better the rabbits in France. Wow, you heard controversial. It here I'm afraid it's true. The salads? Not sure. Not sure about the salads. That looks like a nice salad. It looks like a perfectly fine salad. Now, Mr. Boo, what have you got finally? They've just caught it. Uh, it's a frito misto. Which is? So it's a fried, mixed fried fish. There's uh, some giant prawns, some more anchovies. There's some squid. Uh, there's some little fishy, fishy fish. Check that out. Look at that. Gorgeous. Fantastico. And on a bit of old newspaper. Very trad. I think Mussolini's just come to power on that paper. You see him? Mm. Just at the bottom, near the lemon. Benito rises. Looks delicious. I was going to say, it's the lightest of batter. It's so nice. Is it? It's just really, really crisp and it's more, it's just flour. It's not, it's not full sticky, it's not tempura. It's just like... Well, we had, as you saw, uh, that delicious um, anchovy starter. We had the rabbit, we had, uh, you had uh, frito miso. Um, I probably made a little mistake in the, <laughs> I forgot that, you know, there's no side comes with the rabbit. It was just rabbit and bread. So I've had a very sort of pure day with very little carbs, apart from a bag of crisps had at tea time. Um, but the whole bill with a litre of wine came to 65 euro. 65 euros, you can't beat that. Now, we've two choices, Mr. Boo, now before we wrap this video up. We could go looking for that restaurant that, where we <coughs> experienced the couple having, um, well, getting, getting fruity. Getting fruity. Fruity with us. Or, or we could go look for San Remo's only gay bar. Oh, I know what I fancy. What's that? bed. So, I'm going to take this uh, inside and charge it. Well, we're back in bed with our lover, the all-powers uh, power station that's going to save us 30 euros. 
If you've enjoyed this video, please give us a like, please give us a comment, please think about buying us a coffee. It really does help uh, fund these trips. But most of all, folks, stay charged. Bye.